Unlike many things in photography, sharpening is one of those things where there is a right and wrong way to do it. And I've done it wrong so many times that I've put together some best practices for you today so that you can get it right in your workflow. Hey everybody, Blake Rudis here with F64academy.com where we learn to master Photoshop to make better photographs. F64 Academy is Photoshop for photographers. So today we're gonna to be talking about sharpening. I wanna break down some barriers, break down some walls with sharpening. It's a question I get a lot, especially from beginners. How do you sharpen your photographs? Where do you sharpen your photographs? Why do you sharpen your photographs? Do you sharpen all your photographs? These are questions that I receive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda set the foundation for you and then give you my five best practices for how I sharpen my photographs. So somewhere along the line, in the beginning of my photo post-production journey, I had heard that you're supposed to do noise reduction at the beginning and sharpening at the end. So I had that stuck in my head and many beginners do have that stuck in their head. But the reality of the situation is you can do your sharpening wherever it is that you wanna do your sharpening. I'd even say noise reduction as well, but this is a video about sharpening. You can do that wherever it is that you want to do it. Okay, and I'm gonna teach you why. So let's first lay the foundation of what sharpening is before we get into the five best practices. We need to talk about contrast first. Contrast in your image is basically the area between highlight and shadow, light and dark, and the transition between the two. That's contrast, right? So there's this thing called micro contrast, where instead of the image as a whole having huge various areas of contrast, within each individual detailed area, you have this thing called micro contrast. And that's where you have small areas of contrast that are next to each other. What sharpening is, is it's actually an optical illusion. It targets the micro contrast areas of your image to make higher highlights on that micro contrast and deeper shadows, which in turn makes it appear as if that area is sharper. Okay, that's what sharpening is. It's an optical illusion. It's a trick. Knowing that is a critical element here when we talk about sharpening. So my five best practices, best practice number one, the why of sharpening. Why do we even need to sharpen? Sometimes it's our camera and our sensor type. I remember when I was shooting with an Olympus E510, it was a rather small sensor, micro four third sensor, and I found myself sharpening every single photograph because I needed to. It just didn't have the detail that I needed or the megapixels that I needed. So I needed to sharpen those photographs in order to make those images appear sharper. Another thing might be your lenses. If you have lenses that are on the soft side, you might need to sharpen your images as well. Let's also talk about focus. You might have your image slightly out of focus. You might've missed that focus by just a little bit of a hair. That also might be a reason why you might want to sharpen your image, but you have to be careful with that. You don't want to sharpen bokeh areas. And we'll talk about more of that in a second. Another reason why you might want to sharpen your image is because you might've missed your exposure. If you underexposed your photograph and then later brought up the exposure in something like Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, what would happen is those areas of dark, dark area didn't get recorded quite as sharp as they should have because they were underexposed. So what happens is you often need to sharpen those areas as well. Another reason why you might want to sharpen is to draw the viewer's eye specifically towards something that's sharper than the rest of the image. It's a deliberate tactic for sharpening that I use quite often in my workflow. Now notice I didn't just say why you need to sharpen is because every photograph needs to be sharpened. That's not the case. That's not a, that's not a, a best practice for sharpening. Okay. It's understanding why you need to sharpen that transitions us into the rest of it. So best practice number two, where do we sharpen? Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop, any other program or plugin you think? Well, the type of sharpening that you're doing will dictate where you're gonna to wanna to sharpen that image. I prefer to do most of my sharpening in Photoshop, but, but there's sometimes in the beginning of my workflow that I might need to bump up that micro contrast in something like Adobe Camera Raw. A lot of times when I'm getting the questions of how I sharpen my images, people ask me, where do I sharpen my image? Where do I do, I do it in Adobe Camera Raw and how much sharpening do I do? Well, I can't answer that question with a blanket statement because it's image specific. I hate to be vague about it, but it's absolutely true. You have to know when the image needs to be sharpened and that will help you determine where you need to sharpen it and also why you're sharpening that image. So that leads us to best practice number three, what to sharpen. Typically, I like to leave my sharpening to the mid-tone areas and try to avoid over sharpening in my uh, highlights or over sharpening in my shadows. Oftentimes when I'm doing critique sessions, I get an image that I can tell someone just did a blanket global sharpen. And you can tell because areas around the sun, especially if you zoom in really close, it looks like they're trying to draw a black line around the sun and it just doesn't look good. So global sharpening is not necessarily the best idea. What I'm talking about is more local sharpening, getting down in there. To get an idea of what you need to sharpen, let's talk about a knife. That's not a knife, that's a knife. Okay, so looking at this knife, if my survival instructor said, Blake, go sharpen this knife, and I came back and the handle, the hilt, and the entire blade were sharpened, I think my instructor would be a little bit upset with me. Why? Because the handle doesn't need to be sharpened. If the handle was sharpened, we wouldn't be able to grab the knife. 
the hilt doesn't need to be sharpened because if our hand was too high up on the knife, it would cut our thumb. Now, the entire blade doesn't need to be sharpened because there's a purpose for each side of the blade. The only thing on a knife that actually needs to be sharpened is the edge of the blade itself. All the other parts and pieces need to remain intact because they have a purpose just like the edge of the knife does. And the same is true for your photographs. You don't want to sharpen the entire photograph because if you sharpen the entire photograph, you can be doing a lot of damage to very important areas of that photograph where there's only one specific spot that actually needs to be sharpened. I'll demonstrate this in the last best practice, but let's move on to number four. When do we sharpen? I already alluded to this, but before, during, or after. Now, I'm gonna break down any barrier to this. You don't have to only sharpen at the end of your workflow, okay? There's times where I sharpen at the beginning of my workflow in Adobe Camera Raw to get a rough idea of what the sharpening is gonna look like in a given area. However, I do that very selectively as well, which I'll show you in the next best practice. During my workflow, I might sharpen as well. I might be working on my image in Photoshop and find that there's an area where I wanna draw the viewer's attention to. So I'll use sharpening techniques that will over sharpen a very specific area and then I'll mask that in and use things like blend if. I'll even sharpen after I'm done with the entire image when I'm going to do output sharpening for print. And sometimes that might include a bigger swatch of the entire image, but I'm still going to make sure that I'm not sharpening things like my shadow areas where I'd create more noise or my highlight areas where I draw that marker around edges. Okay. So yes, you can do it before for some mild sharpening to sharpen up some of the details in the image. You can do it during and selectively to get the viewer to look at something very specifically. And you can do it after for output sharpening so it looks really good when you print it out on a 13 by 19 piece of paper and you're just going, oh man, that is so pretty. Real quick, before we continue, this is kind of like the commercial break. If you like this, please press the subscribe button below and hit the little bell to get notified. I do video tutorials like this all the time where I take Photoshop, something very convoluted and very difficult and make it very easy to learn and give you an actionable workflow that you can use right now today. So if you're the type of person that likes that kind of content, press the subscribe button below and you'll get notified when the next video comes out. So that leads us to how do we sharpen? So let's look at this image here. You can see that the foreground of this image has a really nice sharpening on these rocks. These rocks look like you could reach in and touch them, right? That might be a good sharpen for something like printing, but it's probably not the best sharpen for something on my screen, but I'm showing you this for a very specific reason. Now, if I turn this off, you'll see that this is the original image. There might be certain areas of this that I want to be sharpened, but I don't want the entire image to be this sharp because even look at this, it looks like there's a glowing edge around this uh, branch here. You see the optical illusion that I was telling you about, about the difference between highest highlights and darkest dark areas in the micro contrast area to make something appear as if it's sharper than it actually is. Now, the this is a really over sharpened image, but I did this on purpose because I actually see images like this during my critique sessions. Look at this sun. It looks like someone took a Sharpie and tried to uh, draw a line around the bottom of it to sharpen it. I see this in the critique sessions that get submitted in F64 Elite. So I want to talk to you about sharpening and where it needs to be done. So if we look at this image here, this image doesn't have any sharpening on it yet. So one of the ways that I do sharpen is using something like Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So I'm gonna just gonna go into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter by pressing Control Shift A on this image. If I was actually sharpening at the beginning of my workflow, it would be done at the raw level, very similar to what I'm showing you here. So I'm gonna go into the detail section. And if we look at sharpening here, I have no sharpening that is on this image. But the only things that I would really want to be sharpened in this image might be the tree line and maybe the granite rocks here uh, in Valley View here. But I wouldn't want that sharpening to happen on my sky. So let's just height, heighten the sharpening here, increase the radius here, maybe increase a little bit of detail here. Now, if you look at this, it looks actually pretty good on the sides of those rocks, and it actually brings out quite a bit of detail that's happening in those trees. But if we zoom in, look at what happens to the sky. This is what I'm talking about. You don't need to globally sharpen like this. So how then do we not globally sharpen in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom? Now, we don't want to global sharpen. So if we don't want to global sharpen, if you see this masking tool here, we can move this over to the right, and that will start blocking out areas where Adobe Camera Raw does not think it needs to be sharpened. Now, I say that because it's not very intuitive. Now, you can see this sharpening if you press Alt or Option and click on the masking here. Right now, the entire image is being sharpened because it's all white. 
If I move this over to the right while, while holding Alt or Option, the areas of black are not going to be sharpened. And as I move this over, I don't want the whole sky to be sharpened. So in order to not get the sky sharpened, I would have to go all the way over to here. And still, Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom is thinking that those clouds need to be sharpened. OK, so I wouldn't want to do this type of a heavy handed sharpen here at this level, because even at the local level of this, it's still trying to sharpen those clouds. So I'm going to reduce the sharpening here, reduce the, the radius here, reduce the detail here, and then bring this down to about here. Now, this would be ideally what my sharpening would look like if I was doing this at the raw level before I brought it into Photoshop. You'll notice that it's not a whole lot of sharpening. If I move over here to the uh, rock face here and zoom in a little bit more, it's not a whole lot of heavy sharpening. It's very subtle sharpening. It's only happening to areas that are very detailed. And that's because of the masking that's in place and the lower sharpening that I have on this image. If we look at the back of this photograph, though, we are not getting quite as much sharpening on the back of that sky and it looks all right. So the, ideally here at the Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom area, when it comes to sharpening, I would say a very, very mild sharpen. I would not go very sharp with this. Now, where I would go sharper is doing something in Photoshop. And my one of my favorite ways to sharpen is called a high pass sharpen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And that's gonna make a stamp of everything that I've done here, okay? Now this high pass technique, it's been around for ages. And some people don't use it anymore. They think that there's other better ways but I still think that this is the best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this blend mode to linear light. Now linear light uh, at first glance is not gonna be very good for this, but linear light works on something called fill. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drop the fill to about 30% and that's usually a good start when it comes to this, okay? Now I'm also gonna press Control, Shift and U which is gonna desaturate this. So this is actually a desaturated layer. The reason why we're seeing color come through is because it's linear light at 30% and what's underneath. Now I'm gonna zoom into an area here that I, I'm gonna get my sharpening at. So I'm gonna go to filter, other, and then high pass. And looking at this high pass sharpen now, you can see that here we have a lot of control over how sharp these areas are gonna get. Now you see, you'll see a haloing edge that's gonna happen around here too. And that's gonna be one of the, the downfalls of sharpening in general, uh, because again, we're taking areas of, uh, of micro contrast and we're heightening them by creating that optical illusion. And that's okay. That's where I use things like masking and blend if, okay? So I'll press okay on this. Now look at the sharpening that's happening here. This is a pretty heavy handed sharpen. If I turn the preview on and off on this, you can see here's the before and here's the after. It's a pretty heavy sharpen, okay? So I'm gonna zoom out, and this is where I would control things with masking. There's a couple ways that you can do this. There's many ways that you can do this. But one of the ways that I would do this with masking is I would create a new mask on this layer. I'll press Alt and then click on the mask. What that's gonna do is it's gonna default that to a black mask. What does that allow me to do? That allows me now to press B for my brush tool, change that to the color white, and then I can brush in anywhere that I would want that sharpening to be. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my um, big soft edge brush for this and just kind of brush this in here. You see, I'm being very selective about, about where I want that sharpening to be because I wanna draw the viewer's eye into the granite structures here in Yosemite and also into these trees back here. And I'll do that also on this edge here, okay? And then over on this edge here. And where I'd also do this, is probably along these rocks here, maybe just towards the middle, towards the center, okay, to draw the viewer's eye more towards the center, okay, and then zoom on down here, and maybe do it on this rock as well. That way the sharpening actually leads the viewer's eye into the photograph, and they don't even really know it's happening. It's very subtle, okay, because I'm leading the viewer in, and they're kind of like, the eye is gonna be jumping around on the things that are sharpened, especially if they're seeing this in a print and it's really large, and say, oh wow, look at all that detail there. And where, what am I doing? We're going hop, 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 all the way back into all of the areas of sharpening. So you'll notice that the only thing I actually sharpened on here is going to be those areas very selectively. I very selectively sharpened this image, so it's only affecting the areas that I want it to be sharpened. And that's why I go back to the fact that where can you do this in your workflow? You can do it anywhere in your workflow, anywhere, especially when it's a linear light blend mode like this, you could do this sharpening almost anywhere, okay? Uh, because 
anything that goes above or below it, it's still going to be sharpening it based on the linear light blend mode. You can also use things like blend if. So let's say I wanted to blend this a little bit better and I don't want the darkest dark areas to be receiving this because I did say that you want to avoid highlights and you want to avoid shadows. So I'll double click on this. Okay. And if I wanted to avoid the darkest dark areas from getting that sharpening, like this area next to the waterfall, I would move this to the right, which would then start to block that sharpening. Okay. Alt or option, because we're protecting the underlying areas, darkest dark areas from this sharpening by about this much. If we want to see what that looks like, go to a color overlay and you can change this to a magenta color overlay. And it'll actually show you exactly where it is that you are protecting those areas. So when this is like this, this was our original mask. If we press alt or option, we can move this over and it starts to block out and protect those darkest dark areas from sharpening. We want to protect our lightest light areas. Okay. Press alt or option here. And now our highlights are going to be protected from that sharpening. So there we're being very selective about not only painting that's exactly where we want it to be, but also ensuring that it's only going to really be affecting the mid-tone areas and not allowing our highest highlights and our darkest dark areas to receive that sharpening because it's going to look a little funny if it does, like we saw with the marker effect under the sun. What it would also do on the darkest dark areas is it would sharpen noise. So if you did noise reduction and then you did sharpening, guess what? <laughs> it's counterintuitive. Where we can also control this better here in Photoshop as opposed to Adobe Camera or Lightroom is that if I want more sharpening out of this, I just increase the fill. If I want less sharpening out of this, I just decrease the fill. I've got a lot more control here on my sharpening in Photoshop versus Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. If you want to learn more about the blend if stuff, which is the thing I showed towards the end of this video, go ahead and click this playlist over here. I've got an entire playlist full of blend if videos that will help that make a lot more sense. And I, I want you to look at that because that's the most powerful way to control sharpening or almost anything in your photographs. If you like this, please comment, share it, like it, tell a friend and subscribe if you haven't done so already.